I am presenting the role of the role of government to promote innovation. I am Winslow Sargent, Senior Vice President for the International Council for Small Business. My background is as one who is trained as, as an engineer and has spent time within government. I have been an adjunct professor at the University of Pennsylvania. I worked at the National Science Foundation. I was a venture capitalist, and I also spent some time as a senior official in, in government. Um, it, it's, it's an honor for me to present what role or how does the government play a role as it tries to make sure that an ecosystem is developed so we can build the creativity and the innovation culture that is needed to promote entrepreneurship. So when it comes to innovation and creativity or creativity and innovation, the science of science policy and innovation policy matters. And so there are key questions that should be asked. What are the critical elements of creativity and innovation? These are some of the questions that I hope to discuss during this, the first part, the first and the second part of this session. What, are the, what is the global impact or what is the impact of globalization on creativity and productivity? How to predict the likely returns from the future R&D investments? Because when you think of creativity and, and innovation, it involves an investment, it involves discovery, it involves making a concerted effort to create an environment put forth the elements that will foster um, creativity and innovation, which leads to commercialization. And so when you think of the innovation process, um, this figure one here shows that it all starts with discovery. And I come from the technology world, and typically what we find is that it starts out with discovery, so there's funding that is that is provided to a university or some type of research institution and their focus is to come up with, is to discover is to discover new things new way of new ways of doing things new technologies new breakthroughs but once those thing, once those new findings are discovered then there needs to be a way to demonstrate it technologically now you're involving technology to see whether or not that, that discovery can can move its way in the technology realm. And that's called the technology demonstration. That's number two in this figure. After the technology demonstration, then we're looking at product development. And so after you have the technology, now the question is, can I productize this? Is there a product or is there a service that um, can be derived from the discovery? And so, and, and after you've done the product d development, now you want to make sure whether or not this can be commercialized and how to bring it into the market. And so the question is often asked, who is going to pay for this? At, um, where does it fit in? And who are the customers? And how do you scale it? And, and, and once you can identify those things, typically then you have to have funding. And so that's where angel investors come in or venture capitalists come in or someone or, or the 3F, the friends, families, and the other F, which is sometimes called a fool. Those are going to be the ones that will fund the invention or the discovery. And, and after a while, then we're in the growth stage where there's the economic development and impact growth. So now you have, now you've gone up, up on the curve where now you're scaling and now you're, you're, you should um, gain revenue and, and hopefully you can have a sustainable model in the marketplace. So when we think of innovation, when we think of what we call the spectrum, there are many players, there are many partnerships that need to be, a, that, that play a role. As I mentioned, with regard to discovery, we think of the university. We think of where will, where will the new discovery or where will the new thing come from? With the university, there's an expression that says that research 
is the transformation of money into knowledge. And so stated another way that if you give a researcher money, he or she will give you knowledge. Their, their output is knowledge. So that, that's why it does take money to do research, quality research. So, but once you have that knowledge, then if you look at this model, then there are many aspects of where this knowledge will go. Sometimes this knowledge is licensed to a large company, or sometimes this knowledge may be spun off into a small business, or this knowledge could also be licensed to an established small business. So those are the outputs that you get from a university wants knowledge that has been funded um, where that knowledge would go. Now, in each one of these circles, you see that there are different inputs going in. Sometimes a small business may work with a large company, an established small business may work with a large company, but, off, but, but also that small business could also have ties to, to leverage, as was outlined in the previous slide, that if you want to go down the road of discovery and, and commercialization, you're going to have to have investors. And so in this case, you have the investors who are VCs, who are angels. Um, they're the ones that are going to help to, um, help to bring, the mar bring this technology or, or the service right into the marketplace. So once again, so when we think of the spectrum of innovation, we think of all the partnerships that are involved that... Um, make this ecosystem hap happen. Now, one may al I always ask, why are we doing this? Why is this a big deal? Well, we go back to the reason why we look at creativity and entrepreneurship or creativity and innovation. We're looking at, at making an impact into the marketplace. And if we look at the numbers, we look at how that technology makes it into the marketplace, many times through a small business. And so what role do small businesses play? How does, what role do small businesses play in the makeup of our economy? Well, in the United States, 99.9% .9 of all firms are classified as small business. So when you think about it, there are roughly about 29 million firms within the U.S., but 99.9% .9 of those are classified as small business. They're only 0.1%. And so when we say small businesses, we say um, those with 500 employees or less. So when you think about it, um, that the number of firms with more than 500 employees, they're only 0.1%. Of course, when you look at the numbers, the, um, they really contribute, but in terms of just the overall numbers of businesses, 99.9% .9 of all businesses are classified as small business. Now let's look at, um, what is the impact of small businesses within the private sector? 64% um, of all net new jobs, or two-thirds, so if there are three jobs, two-thirds of, two of those three jobs that are created are created by small businesses. That's why they're so important. When we look at growing an economy, we have to make sure that we support small businesses. When you lo we look at the employment, the number of people who are employed by small businesses 49.2, almost ha one out of two em employees work for a small business. Now, if, if we go back and look at the number, 0.1% are large businesses, so 51.8% uh, of, of employees work for large businesses. That, that just shows you that those large businesses are very, very large. They could have 200, 300,000 employees and, but, and, and so that's why you see that only one out of two em employees work for a small business. Now, if you look at payroll, we can look at the numbers. 42.9% of payroll are attributed to small businesses. 46, um, you know, in terms of, of output production, 46%. In terms of high-tech employment, 43% of all high-tech employment are by small businesses. And exported goods. Um, uh, 98%. And so that's why small businesses play such a key role just looking at the numbers. Now, it, it's often asked, what role should the government play with regard to small businesses? Or what role should government play in, in the economy? In, and so should government, is government viewed as a constructive partner 
or is government viewed as someone who is tipping the scales or, or favoring uh, technology or favoring a business? This has this is not new. This has been debated um, since the founding of our country. Because if we look at the U.S. Constitution, Article One, Section Eight, which is often called the Commerce Clause, Congress recognized that to promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing for limited time to authors and inventors the exclusive right to their respective writings and respective writings and discovery, there needed to be protection given. And so that's how the Patent Act or the patent system was created, because Congress recognized that intellectual property was a property, was a right, just like real estate. Also, just like real estate, your, your writings, your inventions should be protected. But note, the protection was limited. So that's why when you think of a patent, it's T is tend to, you tend to have about 20 years for the life of a patent. But that's when the Patent Act was created in 1790 to, to encourage those that if they would disclose their invention, they would have a limited right um, to protect their invention. So one of the patents I like to showcase is the induction electric motor, which was, um, which was discovered, which was invented by Nikola Tesla. And this year was in 1894. Um, so they made electricity a co commercially available power source, used power to power lightning and machinery, revolutionized the quality of life for people everywhere. And I also like to point out that Tesla is a real person. It's not just a car. Most, uh, most people today, uh, they see a Tesla and they think that it's a made up name. Well, no, this is a real person who invented the induction electric motor. And so what we've seen is the impact of discovery. And so when you think of creativity, when you think of innovation, when you think of what the university brings from artificial intelligence meets big data, to solar research, to honeybee research, to visualizing data, to rel rel reliable transmissions, to the bionic eye, to protecting rainforest. We see that um, discovery is the beginning, is, the, is a major part of innovation. And so what is outlined here are some of the discoveries we see that come out of research. So the funding have been provided to universities and, or, or research institutions, and they've used that funding to come up with breakthroughs. And so we see the benefits of big data, we, of solar research, of bee research. And so after we've ha we have that, then we have to find a way, as was outlined before, now we have to move it into technology demonstration or commercialization. So I just want to thank you for staying with us for the first part. Now, this is the first part of this discussion. It's going to get, it, it, we're really going to go into how do we, Go from the path of discovery to commercialization. And, and, in, and in, in the second half, we're going to spend some time and look at innovation. How do we innovate? Because when you think of creativity, that's thinking of new things. So when you think of creativity, have a dash. Creativity is a new way of thinking. While when we think of innovation, I'll leave that to the second half, and then we'll, we can discuss how that differs from creativity. I want to thank you and so look forward to seeing you for part two.